Craig, do you have any uh, recruiting trips coming up? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's bye week and, uh, it's the final week of, uh, regular season high school play here in the state of Nebraska. And, you know, the big thing coming up Saturday is Malachi Coleman making his decision. Um, so I am going to go see Malachi play Lincoln East is going to go to Gretna and play, uh, Oklahoma state quarterback commit Zane Flores and Nebraska offensive line commit um, uh, Goldman. Uh, I can't remember his first name off the top of my head. Um, so that should be a good one. I kind of changed that. I was going to go to Elkhorn South and uh, Omaha North. But, uh, no, we got to do this now, this uh, with Malachi doing his commitment and everything. And um, So that's, that's kind of the biggest uh, recruiting deal going on right now this week. So that'll, that'll be a really big thing. And, um, you know, like I said before, many a times that if Mickey Joseph is here, I think Malachi Coleman comes here anyway. And, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It, in my mind, it's either Nebraska or Oklahoma. And, um, I think Malachi, just because he had set this date, he probably doesn't want to pull the trigger already. But, you know, he set this date a while ago, and I don't think he's the kind of guy that wants to turn back on it. And and I think with, um, you know, the way that you can get in the transfer portal one way or the other, I think he actually picks Nebraska no matter what, um, wait and see if Mickey's here or not, um, because he can always jump in the transfer portal later. But um, that's just my two cents worth. Nothing, I have no solid information on that. That's just kind of my gut feeling. So if we run through the 23 class right now with 13 hard commits, I'm going to run through these guys. I'm going to give you a, like three at a time and you just let us know whatever you, obviously there's, there's some you're very familiar with some you've seen play a lot that you've seen play a few other guys that maybe you're not as familiar with. So I'll let, let you pick and choose to give us a, a profile on whoever hits you here. So our top three in the class are wide receiver on, Omari and Miller, you got uh, interior offensive lineman Riley Van Poppel, and you got wide receiver Jaden Doss. Uh, you know, those are three guys I've not personally got to see. Um, so those are – they're not in-state guys, and right now I wouldn't even want to comment one way or the other because they committed to the old staff. and True. Uh, you know, kind of have to see how things play out. And it's going to be like for most of the out of state guys, it's going to be about the same. <laughs> Unfortunately, I would have gone to see some of these guys too if things weren't so volatile. But um, that's just the way things are right now. Do you have anything on quarterback William Watson, edge rusher oh. Maverick Noonan, or offensive tackle Gunner? Oh, the yeah. Cooper? Yeah. Obviously. Well, quarterback pop, um, you know, he, he's, he's a big Mark Whipple guy that, you know, that Mark Whipple had been recruiting to, to pit, but, um, you know, so I, I think that big factor there is that, uh, if Mark Whipple's not here, I, I think he goes elsewhere. Um, and that's William, that's William Watson, William pop Watson, uh, Maverick Noonan, you know, I mean, hell he's, his dad's a legend here. Um, he's not going anywhere. Um, you know, Maverick's one of my favorite guys in this class. Uh, you know, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I saw, I watched him catch a batted ball out of the air, play an offensive line and catch it for a touchdown in the end zone. It was when his running back coughed it up. Um, and, you know, he, he's a great dude. And, you know, like I said, his dad's a legend here. So he, he's, he's good to go. Uh, and, and his Elkhorn South team is undefeated. They'll, they'll be the number one seed in the playoffs when they start in two weeks as well. Um, and then uh, Gunnar Gatula, you know, I mean, he's been committed. He was, I think he might have been the first commit in this class, Lincoln Southeast, you know, another pipeline guy from the Southeast that Nebraska does really well recruiting, you know, and his dad, his dad is the head coach at Lincoln Southeast. So, you know, he's, he's a big football guy and he's not going anywhere either. 
<laughs> I mean, you know, those are two of the most solid guys. And, and him and Maverick are really good friends uh, to, to go on with that. So, yeah, uh, those guys are solidly committed. And, and Gunner's had a good year. Lincoln Southeast has been a little bit down, but um, they're not out of the playoff hunt yet. Got uh, wide receiver Benjamin Brommer. We've got offensive tackle Brock Knudsen, and we've got the edge rusher Dylan Rogers. Yeah, um, you know, first off, um, you know, uh, uh, Ben Bramer, he actually plays tight end at, at Pierce High School. Um, you know, he's listed as a tight end, but he he pretty much will move to wide receiver if you ask me. He's got that. He's got the body type more of a wide receiver than a tight end. But, you know, he's a lot like a Thomas Fedoni type guy. Um, very, very good player. He's been committed now for almost two years. He's not going anywhere. His dad's the head coach at Pierce High School as well. Um, so, you know, big time Nebraska ties. And he's got great hands. Uh, he can run and, um, you know, just needs to beef up a little bit, uh, uh, you know, especially if he's going to play tight end. But uh, like I just said, he's got more of a wide receiver body than a tight end at, at, at like 6'5", six, 6'6". Five, six, six. And then, oh, I'm sorry. Then uh, what, who else do you have? Brock uh, like Knutson and Brock... Rogers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Brock Knutson, just a huge human being. He, he's six foot nine. <laughs> um, you know, he plays at Scott's Bluff, you know, out, out, <laughs> out in the, the way western Nebraska. He's closer to Denver than he is to Lincoln. Um, Garrett Nelson's, you know, Garrett Nelson came from Scott's Bluff, but, um, this is a kid that he, uh, he actually just came to Scott's Bluff. He played in a smaller, uh, classification school that wasn't too far away from Scott's Bluff, but he wanted to get noticed. So he, uh, transferred to Scott's Bluff and, and, uh, like I said, he, he he's a big beast of a, uh, of a kid. Um, I think he's got a good future, uh, you know, on the offensive line especially if they can get some good coaching. Um, so there you go there. And then Dylan Rogers is, is a highly touted uh, kid out of the Kansas City area. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's kind of hard to say what, you know, if he'll end up here or not either because uh, more than likely most of the guys that recruited him probably aren't going to be here. Um, but it, it's kind of hard to say right now. But he's a heck of a player, and that would be a loss. If he doesn't come here, we get uh, Sam Sledge, the guard center out of Omaha. We've got uh, Dwight Boodle, the cornerback out of Miami, and uh, the Georgia kid Barry Jackson, a wide receiver, and Hayden Moore, the linebacker from Aurora, Colorado. Well, yeah, you know, okay, you know, you start out Sam Sledge. You know, he's a legacy. His dad played here, uh, Omaha Creighton Prep. Um, He's not going anywhere. He'll be here. He's another, you know, one of the top in-state recruits, and he's been he's been committed for a long time as well. Uh, real solid player on the offensive line. He plays both ways, but uh, you know he's projected as an interior offensive lineman, and um, you know he's still got a lot to work on. You know, I've watched him play several times, and and he and definitely you know uh, there's a lot of improvement to be made there, but he's definitely got the, the willpower and, and the want to, to do that. Um, Dwight Boodle, you know, I mean, what can you say? His brother DiCaprio starred here. Um, their whole family has loved Nebraska for, for eons. Um, DiCaprio actually got in the game there <laughs> in that Kansas city game uh, uh, on Sunday. Um but uh, yeah, he's not going anywhere. He's a he's a kid that committed to the school, not the coaching staff, which you know is kind of something that usually in-state guys is what you talk about. But um, no, he he's a solid commit, and he's been having a heck of a year, you know, down in the Miami area, and um, you know, really really good player. So I expect him to, uh, especially if Travis Fisher. I mean, Travis Fisher is a great defensive backs coach, and and another guy like Mickey that, that you would be just stupid not to keep on staff if you're a new head coach coming in here. Um, and then uh, uh, I, I'm drawing a blank on who else you said. Sorry. Also, <laughs> uh, Barry Jackson, wide receiver. Uh, yeah, you know, another another guy that, 
it could go either way. You don't know. I mean, right now he's still on commit, but um, yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and you know, another guy I haven't had a chance to see in person. Um, haven't really checked out how his season is going either. And then finally, uh, Hayden Moore, the linebacker out of Aurora. Oh yeah, I think he's a solid. He's a pretty solid commit. A guy that uh, is another kind of a, a guy that comes from a, a background of a family that's Nebraska fans and stuff. Um, and he's been having a really good season, and and I expect him to to honor his commitment as well moving forward, no matter what the situation is. So, you know, there you go. I, that's kind of in a nutshell. I mean, obviously you're not going to keep all these guys on here right now, um, you know, after things all are said and done. But um, definitely I think you're still going to have a good solid core. And, and you know, I mean, like Mickey and, and his staff are still out there recruiting like crazy, just like they're going to be here as, as the staff. So, um, you know, we'll see. And, and, and if that happens, if Mickey gets the job, I would say all these guys honor their commitment. 